Word of truth, y'all ready this morning? Come on, let's get on our feet right now. We want to go ahead and set the atmosphere for great expectations since we're under an open heaven. Hey! You know it's true. Sing, I believe. I believe. That is my season. Come on, touch yourself right now and say, I believe. I believe. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel and it. I can feel it. Won't oh, breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. Anybody out there anticipating this morning? Anticipating. God's getting ready to God's move. God's getting yeah. ready to move. You got to sing this from your chest. Come on. For I know my God is worth a And it's just for me. Just for me. One, two, me. two, three. And it's going to be. to declare this all year. Come on. I believe. I believe. That it's about time for a miracle. It's my time. It's time for a breakthrough. It's my time. And I can, I can feel it. Breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. Anticipating. Anticipating. Yeah. God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. Word of truth, lift it up, lift it up. Move around up. Raise it up. God's gonna open. God's gonna open the windows of heaven. Pull it out. Pour me out a blessing. Won't be. Won't be wrong to contain it. Won't even try to explain it. But it's gonna be big. God's about to blow my mind. God's about to blow my mind. Yeah. God's gonna open the windows and of heaven. He's gonna Said it's gonna be big. Said it's gonna be big. Prison like it's gonna be big. Worship like it's gonna be big. Eyes have not seen big. Ears have not heard big. The things that he has in store for you. It's gonna be big. I've been through too much for it not to be big. I suffered too long. to put a praise on it right now. Come on. No, for real. Put a praise on it. Woo. We worship you.
your blood is healing every wound. Your blood is making all things new. Your blood speaks a better word. Your blood, the measure of my word, your blood, more than I deserve, your blood, it speaks a better word, speaks a better word, it's singing out with life. Lift your hands if you believe that today. Is shouting down the line. It echoes through the night. The precious blood of Christ speaks a better word. Speaks a better word. Your blood, a robe of righteousness. Your blood, my hope and my deep. Your blood forever covers me, forever covers me. Come on and sing it out today. It's singing out with light, shouting down the light. It's shouting down the light. It echoes through the night. It echoes through the, the night. The precious blood speaks a better word. It's a song of redemption, restoration, freedom. I am free, I am free. It's rewriting my history. It covers me with destiny. It's making all things right. The precious blood of Christ say It's rewriting my history It's rewriting my history Yes it is It covers me with destiny I'm forever covered when I come and when I go It's yeah. making all it's things making right. all things right The precious blood, the precious blood, blood of Christ It's rewriting my yeah, it's history It's rewriting my history Yes it is yeah. It covers me with destiny I'm
God, we thank you for a better word. We thank you for a better word. Yes, Lord. We lift our hands all over the building on this morning, God. Have your way in this place. Yes, Lord. Have your way in this place. Yes, Lord. Have your way in this place, dear God. Yes, God. Move by yes, your spirit, God. Yes, Move God. by your spirit, God. Yes. Take anything right now, God, that is not of you, God. Take it out of this place, God. Thank you right now, God. Thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to do, God. Yes, Lord. What's getting ready to happen in this yes, place, God. Lord. We thank you, God. We're excited, God, yes. to see what you're going to do on today, God. Yes, thank Lord. you, God. Thank Let you, us Lord. be encouraged. Let us be motivated, God, yes, to Lord. live all the more for you, God. Yes, we thank you. Thank you. Thank Lord. you. Have your way, God. Have your we way. thank you. We thank you. Come on, we thank you. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. 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 Have your way in this place, God. God, we give you all the glory, yes, God. All, the honor, all the honor, and all the praise that and you deserve. In your name we do pray. Amen. 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 Welcome to Word of Truth this morning. Welcome to church this morning. We thank you for joining us this morning. We thank you for everyone that is online joining us this morning. Go ahead and have your seats. Turn to your neighbor. Give him a high five. Tell him I love to see you today. That's good. That's good. That's good. Amen. As you take your seats, pay attention to the screen to this morning announcements. Hello and welcome to Word of Truth. We are so excited that you're here worshiping with us today. If you're online through YouTube or Facebook, please take a moment to like and share our page. If you need prayer for anything, please let us know by texting the word prayer to 817-601-1832. First time guests, we want to welcome you. So please text the word guest to 817-601-1832 to get more information about our church. If you have a child with us today, our True Kids ministry is going on right now. So if you have a newborn through sixth grade, please see an usher where they can escort your kid to True Kids. Elevate is our weekly youth service for 7th through 12th grade. So if you have a student in the 7th, 12th grade, send them out every Wednesday night from 6.30 to 8, where we have fun, fellowship, and an amazing word just for them. Hey, we want to welcome you to Word of Truth. Thank you for joining us, and we are praying that you will enjoy the worship, the word, matter of fact, the entire service. So at any point, if you decide to give your life to Christ, recommit your life to Christ, want to get baptized, or even become a member, we want you to take advantage of the QR codes that are in the lobby and on the screens. Scan it, fill it out, and we want to connect with you. Never want to miss a service again? Go to YouTube, click the subscribe button, and also ring that notification bell. That way, you will always stay connected to us. And while you're at it, go over to Facebook and Instagram and follow us at WOTFC. Word of Truth Family Church, Pastor Evan here. I'm excited about the month of February. You may say, why? Well, number one, guess what? I'm doing a new series called Unorthodox Love. You do not want to miss that. And then what I'm doing that is going to be a surprise, but I'm leaking it to you. And that is on the fourth Sunday, February 26th at the 11 o'clock service only. Guess what's happening? I am actually marrying people who live together. That's right, that's right. If you are living together and you are not married, I wanna marry you. We're calling that the I do service. I will. What is it? Say I do. Let's do it again. Okay, it's say I do. So listen, there are some things you have to do. Number one, go to our website and you will find the landing page that it will ask you for your information so we will have your proper name and everything to do the wedding. That's number one. Number two, you have to go get your marriage license. Why? Because it's not official just because I do the service. It's official to the state when you fill out, when you get your, your license and I sign that. So here's what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a massive marital ceremony. Listen, we're talking about I don't know, the last time I did this, I think we had 12 couples that got married on the same day. So I am giving you an opportunity to not have an excuse of why you still shacking. That's right, I said it, I probably shouldn't have said it, but I did. You know me, it's hard for me to keep it 
I gotta keep it moving. Here is what you need to know about participating in our Say I Do Sunday. You qualify for the No More Shacking Peel. Here are the side effects when you take this No More Shacking Peel. That yucky feeling of sin goes away. No more burning because it's better to marry than to burn. You can have as much relations as you would like and even read the Bible when you're done. The No More Shacking Peel will leave both of you feeling amazing. Due to the regulations of the state of Texas, you must have your marriage license 72 hours before using it. Therefore, Word of Truth needs you to have your license in hand by February the 21st. Hey, has it been a while since you were a part of True Groups? Are you new to Word of Truth and looking for a way to connect? If so, I believe this is the season for you to join True Group. True Groups is a small group ministry that we have at Word of Truth where you are able to build community and to delve deeper into God's Word. In joining a True Group, you will meet others who will encourage you, come alongside life with you, and help you to become the person that God has called you to be. True Groups are also fun. We have small groups that cater to various interests, including women groups, men groups, young adults, Spanish-speaking groups, and more. The spring True Group season begins on February 26th, and sign-ups start today. How to connect? Visit the True Group table in the foyer or go online to the church's website. Thank you so much for joining us, and enjoy the rest of your service here at Word of Truth. Good morning, Word of Truth Family Church. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm excited to see you this morning. Now, let me ask this question. How many of you want to be blessed? Okay, so let's do this. If you want to be blessed, I want you to shout real loud right now. If you want to be blessed. Okay. Okay. However, how many of you want to stay blessed? Okay. So, so we get some really good teaching here at Word of Truth Family Church. And one thing that pastor has taught us, he says, tithing is proof that you want to be blessed. Stewardship is proof that you want to stay blessed. And so I want to read a scripture before we get ready to give. It comes out of Luke 16, 10 through 12. And it says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Now listen, guys, what ends up happening is that some people say, you know what, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to tithe until my money get right. How many of you know that sometimes your money don't ever get right? Has anybody ever heard this? This is not one thing, it's a... Okay, okay. And so here's what I'm encouraging you to do. Pastor has challenged us this month to tithe. If you've never tithed, be a tither. Because tithing is proof that you want to be blessed. Stewardship is proof that you want to stay blessed. And so now, I just want to share with you really briefly. I know a little, little, little lady who lives with us. She's my number four or our number four. And she was graduating from, getting ready to graduate from school. And the school, <laughs> how many of you have ever been here for? This, right before graduation, the school say, you owe some money. <laughs> and you know, they, they allow you to graduate and they give you the little cover, but on the inside of the cover it says, you still owe us. <laughs> well, she found out that she owed $19,000. 19. And so she was, she was really, really discouraged at the time, but she, she graduated, and then she went on for the next year. All of year of 2022, I saw her get meager means from whatever she worked. Meager means. And then what ends up happening is I saw this same little girl who lives with us. She would return the tithe, she would give her offering, and then she would give some Project 360. If she made 600, I bet you about 250 went to God. About a month ago, she came into my room at the house and she said, Daddy, Daddy, I'm thinking something wrong. And she said, 
I just got an email from my school and it said, my 19,000 has gone to zero. You don't have to wait till your money get right. All you got to do is tithe, return the tithe, give a little offering, give some to Project 360, and watch God do the rest. Because tithing is proof that you want to be blessed. Stewardship is proof that you want to stay blessed. Stand to your feet. If you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand. Our ushers will make sure we have some in the middle. Our ushers will make sure that you get those uh, offering envelopes. If you're giving in the service, we have uh, our receptacles in the back. If you're giving online, we have several ways to give. And so we're going to say our, our confession together. And it says, because I give offerings. <laughs> see, see, the thing is that it's not about, when it comes to the tithe, it's not about the money. It's about our obedience. Tithing is proof that you want to be blessed. Stewardship is proof that you want to. Let's say our confession together. Father, I thank you. Live in daily expectation of an exceptional life. I always support the kingdom of God of all my increase. Therefore, the windows of heaven's blessings are open to me. I believe I receive so much creative wisdom, insights, and opportunities that I cannot take advantage of them all. Because I give offerings, I thank you, Father, for raising up unsuspecting people to go out of their way to use their and their resources. Thank you for blessing me so I can be a blessing. Exceptional and extraordinary increase for me, my family, and my church. In Jesus' name. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with a message of hope in relationships. But your life does not... God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> we share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman to God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey, thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you sell it scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth. And it means people, it means men, it means resources, and it means means. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast on tour. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, the host, and man, God is doing amazing things. Are you still shacking up with us? I know you saw the little snippet <laughs> that Pastor Evan did. Well, why don't you hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you can be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, God is doing some amazing things this season, and I'm so honored that God is doing a mighty work. Um, as we look at this episode today... A lot of y'all at church, y'all wonder, why are we hearing the testimony of pastor and his love, the love of his life? Well, Revelations 12, 11 says, oh, I love this scripture. It's one of my favorite scriptures. It says that people will be overcome by the word, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so uh, unorthodox love is the expression of love in hopes that it brings encouragement. Uh, those of us that are still in our waiting season, that we don't grow weary in our well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Come on, somebody. So, um, without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My homie, Pastor Evan and Sharice Nix. How y'all doing? Amazing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Church. Dear Future Wifey podcast listeners and watchers, thank you so much for tuning in today. I believe your life is going to be changed, encouraged, or inspired. So listen to this, you know, people want to just jump right on in. You know, um, they saw you 
go through divorce as a pastor. Uh, then you announced an engagement last week to this beautiful woman who just so happened to be my friend of seven years. Y'all, y'all clapping and say, beautiful woman, y'all. So Sharice and I have been knowing each other for about seven years. We started out knowing each other. She was the principal of my nephew. And during the adoption phase of my nephew, um, now I had the seven-year-old kid, and um, I put him in the area school in Cedar Hill, and she just so happened to be the principal. And uh, me and her connected during that time. And so uh, what I love about you, Pastor Evan, is that you like to tackle stuff right at the head. You said, hey, listen, this is the love of my life. Uh, she's going to operate as the first lady in the church, and I want to go ahead and introduce her to the congregation. I think that this is absolutely brilliant. Absolutely Thank brilliant. Thank you for that. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. So, Cherise, um, like, you, like I said, I, I want to reverse engineer this story because, of course, I know it, and I'm trying to make sure I don't put the cart before the horse. Um, if I were to ask you, who is Sharice Nix, what would you say? Good morning, Word of Truth. Sharice <laughs> is, um, I'm a woman of God whose um, principles and, and faith in Christ is the center. It's who I am. It's who I've always been. And I'm a woman who um, is passionate, who's educated, a woman who um, is... Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm someone who um, always wants the best. I believe in helping others. That's one of my goals in life is to reach back and mentor other people. Um, but who I am is just a person who gives, a person who loves, and a person who um, always wants to excel. Another thing, I know she's going to be very humble about it, but uh, Sharice is a boss. I'm just going to let you know she's a boss uh, in her own right, um, high level at a major school district here in the DFW Metroplex. Uh, I've been privileged enough to help you when you were going for these uh, job promotions and these career moves by working on the video presentation of your portfolio. And so uh, one day when she was interviewing for, for her current job, I watched her brilliance. I saw her as a principal. I saw what she did in, in the school district that she was in, but I watched her brilliance because, you know, you normally don't get a chance to see someone interview. And so uh, that was during the pandemic, and she came to my studio, and she was doing a virtual interview, and I was watching them firing off questions. You know, you're seeing this panel of people looking at your mean mug and like, do you really want me to work here or not? And I watched her handle pressure, and uh, because the job that she's, she's feeling right now, the, the, the position that she's in is a high-level position where you're front-facing for the media of a school district. And so... Uh, after that moment, after even knowing you probably about five years at that time, I was like, Sharice is brilliant. This girl can handle adversity. And so I love how strategic God is to allow you to be in those spaces as a principal, as a leader, then as a, as a chief of communication for one district, a director of communications for another, uh, for such a time as this. Because all of those assets are essential for the role that you're going to play as first lady. You know, and I, can I add this about her, because she's not going to say it, but uh, I have learned a lot about the school districts, and uh, she is the second, I think, highest African-American person in the district right. where she works. Right, right. And it has over 55,000 students. Yeah. She has about 40 people, you know, that she oversees, and so she is a boss. Yeah. And, uh, I appreciate that about her. And uh, the other thing that I did want to say is sometimes... Uh, when you meet people, what you see is not what you get. Exactly. But uh, thank God, what I see is what I got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cherise, let's talk about your, your journey of love. Um, how many times were you married? I've been married twice. All right, so you've been married twice. Uh, let's talk about your first marriage. Uh, how long were you married the first time? My first marriage was about eight, nine years or so. What were you, I, I like to ask people not what the other person, not what the other person did in the marriage or whatnot. I like to ask people, what did you learn about yourself uh, in your marriage, especially when it goes awry? So my question to you is, what did you learn about yourself having come through, you know, having gone through that first marriage? So the first marriage, I got married at 24 years old. And when we got married, I'd known him the majority of my life. We'd gone to junior high, high school together. And so there was a familiarity around that. When I came home from college, um, we connected back and we got married. And at the time, our commitment to Christ was on the same level. 
And so we went to church together. We served in the ministry together. We prayed together. We, we did what um, Christian marriages should do. And not um, so long after that, um, our commitment changed. Um, and so when one's commitment changes, then the lifestyle changes. Of course. Then their actions change, their words change, behaviors change. And so um, when we found ourselves struggling in the marriage, um, me being the stronger Christian at the time, um, I did what I, what I knew to do. And I prayed and I fasted and I um, anointed shoes and I anointed a steer wheel, steering wheel. <laughs> and I, you know, like, Lord, bless, don't let them go, Lord. <laughs> you know, I, I went in the prayer closet and I begged and I cried and I, I, I because I'm a preacher's kid. Yeah. And so, you know, divorce isn't looked upon as an option. You know, you're supposed to stay, you're supposed to f stick it out. But when, when you don't have the same level of commitment, then there are going to be some issues in your marriage when God is not the center. And so, um, you know, his will, um, it, it was his will that, per, that, um, that, that God allowed his will to happen, you right. know. And so his that was his decision, his choice. And so um, throughout that, that process, um, we ended up getting divorced, and, and, and I felt like God had let me down. Right. I felt like God didn't hear me anymore. I felt like um, I had prayed, and, and I'm not perfect, but I was always a good girl. You know, I always did the right thing. And so I was like, God, I've honored you. Why have you not honored me? Right. Like, why would you do this to me? And I got really, really bitter, and I got really angry, and I got really hurt. And that situation left me depressed. I had even suicidal thoughts um, because I just couldn't understand, like, why? Yeah. And at that point, I had turned away from Christ. I always believed in him, but I felt like, what's the point? Right. God, I prayed, I cried, like, I'm living for you. Like, why are you not remembering me? Right. And so um, I just flat out was like, I'm not going to pray anymore. Yeah. What's the point? I'm not going to pray. I prayed and prayed and prayed. It didn't matter. Yeah. God did what he wanted to anyway. And so I was in a really, really bad place after that first divorce. And so I met you uh, after that time, shortly after that time. Uh, and, of course, I didn't even know all of that had uh, transpired. Uh, but then I met you in the courtship of the, your second marriage. <clears throat> So I mentioned the courtship of your second marriage, and it was around this time when, um, you know, we keep it lit on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. We live intentionally and transparently. And so my, my nephew was going to the school, and it was around this holiday, Valentine's Day. And I went up to the school, and you were a little mad. You were a little upset. Why was you upset, Sister Nick? I Nixon? don't remember, let's hear. Well, I'm going to tell you why you was upset. <laughs> why you was upset? Tell it. I'm going to tell it. Why you was upset is because all the other teachers was getting gifts for Valentine's Day. They was getting chocolates and teddy bears and all that good stuff and meals set, sent to the school. And I was like, I went up there to say hello to you. You was in your office crying. Am I telling too much? I'm sorry. Anyway, you was in your office crying because that love interest didn't give you a gift, didn't uh, honor you for Valentine's Day. Um, and um, hmm, I'm just got to tell it. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out what to say and what not to say, and I just don't know how not to say it. And so what happened was you were, you were, you were dating this individual, and I said, um, I'm going to reverse engineer it. I'm going to talk about the happy. What made you decide to date the second individual? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like I said, after my first marriage, I was just not in a good place. I wasn't. I, I had put aside all of my standards, you know, like my beliefs, the things that I had been taught, the things that I knew to do, and um, because I felt like I was a Christian the first time, it doesn't matter this time, I'm just going to do what I want to do. Right. I'm just going to go and just just do what I want to do, and knowing that that wasn't what I needed to do. And so I made some decisions that I probably shouldn't have made um, in regards to that relationship. Um, I did love him. I do want to state that. All right. <clears throat> I was committed to our marriage. But again, when you're not aligned with Christ, 
when you're not in a relationship where he's the center and the focus, again, you go on that spiral of destruction. Right. I remember calling you one day, um, and I said, um, I believe, I just had this vision that he was going to propose extremely soon. And within a couple of days, he ended up proposing. Then I called you again, and I said, <laughs> I said, Cerise, God just showed me the, the trajectory of your marriage. What did you tell me before I got a word out of my mouth? I said, Blazing, I... Letaris, I call him Blazing, y'all, so sorry. I had, a clothing, okay. I had a clothing line called Blazing that I would do for the school district, so she sometimes called me by my clothing line. So, so I said, Blazing, I don't want to hear it. I yeah. said, I don't, don't want to hear it. She cut me off before I could tell her what God had shown me um, in the marriage. And what happened? How did that marriage... What did you say to her? I didn't get a chance to say it, Pastor. I was going to tell it, so God showed me that the marriage was going to end in divorce. And you don't ever want to, and so when someone gets married, I say nothing to them at that point. But you still have a warning before destruction on the onset. And my rule is, I don't care if it's my best friend, I don't care who it is, my family member, I, even my daughter, I don't speak about your marriage once you get married. I say that is a protected space for you. You can complain, you can vent, you can say whatever. I'm not going to even give you advice about anything. But before you get married then I always say that that's, a, that's the space where you can actually get wise counsel from the aspect of somebody speaking, hey, this may not be the choice that you need to make. And I heard God so clearly. And before I could say it, she said, I don't want to hear it. And I said, okay. And I shut my mouth. And so then I just sat back on the sideline watching her go through this journey. And like I said, uh, her ex-husband, you know, just like any man, he's a cool dude. Like I said, he's a cool dude. I got a chance to work with him on the project. But it was just, I saw some of the things in myself, in my past self in him. That's the reason why I can, I'm so self-aware that if I see some of the same brokenness that I had that caused me to act the way I did in my past marriage, if I can see that in another individual, I'll tell that brother what it is, or I'll even tell the woman to be like, hey, listen, you need to keep an eye out for that. So it wasn't no uh, shade towards him. It was just warning before destruction. Uh, but she proceeded and... Um, it ended. You know, my parents didn't even come to the wedding. Exactly. They didn't, they, they, they didn't even come. So. And how did that make you feel? Well, that was devastating to me because I felt like even though it was my choice, um, I still wanted my family, to, my parents to support me and they didn't. Um, but I understood, you know, I, I understand now. I remember uh, we were working on this project, me and your team, and we were at Salada. And uh, we had this great debate, Sharice and I. And what was that great debate about? We had debated. We were talking about prayer. And I was so adamant. And I was like, Blazing, I don't, I don't believe in prayer. Now, mind you, I have never. This is not who I am. That's not who I was raised to be. It's not even who, what I believe. Right. But that's the, such the place that I was in. I was that in hurt. Such, a bad, such a bad place. My trauma caused me to stop trusting. Yes. And God. Yeah. And that was really, really powerful because I'm seeing this, this, this powerful woman who is moving and shaking in these other areas that require faith with job promotions and things of that sort. But then in her spiritual life and, and love relationship, she was like, no, I don't pray. And I said, what you mean? Because I was saying, hey, why don't you pray for God to, to change your, your marriage? To, to do? She's like, it just, it just don't work. Why pray if God is going to do whatever he's going to do anyway? And I was just like, like, what do you say at that moment? And so I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty, pretty deep. Um, and that's what blows my mind because the woman who sits before me right now, I remember when you invited me to Word of Truth. That's the reason why I go to Word of Truth is that Sharice invited me. Now, here's a woman who don't believe in prayer, but here she is walking around giving me I a I do start. now, Blake. I mean, yeah, I'm talking about then. I'm talking about then. I would hope Let so. Me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about then. Back then. And here it is, she invited me to church. And I was just like, wow, she invited me to church on Easter last year. And, um, and now here I am, a member of Word of Truth. And because, and what's so dope about it is that she started the process in my healing of church hurt. So here I am trying to help heal her from relationship hurt. And now she's healing me from church hurt. So good. So I'm going to go ahead and let Sharice out the hot seat, and I'm going to jump on my brother, Pastor Evan, right here. So Pastor Evan, I met this brother. 
<laughs> so, so Pastor Evan, I met you. I met you during Easter uh, last year. And um, when I first met you, I was shooting a project for uh, Dr. Sam Nix, who so happened to be Sharice's brother. And, uh, and this is how God works. We just all intermingle together. And I was shooting this project for Sharice's brother. What is your relationship with, with Dr. Nix? Well, Dr. Nix is uh, a member, uh, but years ago, uh, the school that we started with, uh, it had a, a principal, and then when that principal retired, Dr. Nix became the principal who happened to be a member of the church. So his influence and his, his uh, uh, I guess, connections helped us in that school situation. And so that's how uh, Dr. Nix was involved in the whole scenario. And, and I just want to rewind and then go forward again just to say, you know, this is not about throwing shade on exes or anything no. like that. Because the, the, the whole point of today is to help you see that uh, sometimes uh, people need to see God do something in your life when something bad has happened in your Fact. life. And, and I want to encourage you to know uh, God's will for your life doesn't change just because someone else's will in your life changes. There it is. His whole point and purpose is to give you an expected end. And so I just wanted to throw, throw that out there. So, That's good. That's good. So I first met you uh, when you were invited by Sharice to come to church. She invited using the... Uh, the, the the Devil Level Starbucks card. Oh, the Devil <laughs> Level Starbucks card. Yes. So uh, he came to church, and uh, you actually invited me to, to be, be on, on the your podcast. podcast. Yeah, Dr. Nix introduced us. Um, what was interesting is that uh, one of your members came up to me and said, you should, you should join this church. Uh, you single and the pastor single. I said, that's not a selling point for me to come join the church. <laughs> that is not. That is the opposite of why I would want to join the church, you know. <laughs> and, so, and so after church, the, uh, Dr. Nix had introduced me to you, and I was like, this brother is cool. And then I turned to uh, Sharice, and I said, I think he like you. So I said why that. would you say that? Because I made sure... I wasn't looking like I liked her. And that's why I knew you liked her, because you were trying to make sure uh, that you didn't look at her. Well, and let me, <laughs> and let me get perspective. At, at that time, uh, I was 75% not going to get married right. again. 25%, I'm just leaving that up to the Lord. Right. And it wasn't because I'm going through all this pain and hurt and all that, even though that's a part of it. Right. But even in that process, you know, I learned that when you're going through difficulty, you can't let difficulty get inside of you. There it is. There it is. And if you're trashing your ex, I don't know who this is for, but if you're trashing your ex, that means your heart has trash in it. And God can't put blessing on trash. There it is. Jesus said, out of an evil heart proceeds evil things. So how can God put a blessing on a heart that has trash in it? Talk about it. So as I was walking through the difficulty, yeah, it was challenging. But I had decided, you know, look, I'm almost 60. So I was like, I'm just going to let work be my wife. <laughs> and I'm going to yeah. spend my money like I want to. <laughs> so I was 75% getting married, 25 you know, not. So when I met you, and that's just where I was in that space. And we did the podcast right around that time. And it was interesting because you was afraid to do the podcast. You, you, did, you didn't know the, the gravity of the podcast and the reach. And so you were talking to some members at the church, and they were like, yeah, you should do that podcast. At that time, I had 90,000 subscribers. You was like... Oh, no, I can't, I can't. <laughs> well, no, I asked him, I say, so what percent of your podcast are women? <laughs> he said 77 percent. I said, oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I, I, look, I, no, and I told him no. And then I talked to Pastor Lisa, Pastor Polo, that was like, Pastor, what's the problem? You need to get out there. You're looking at what could happen of, of how people may react to it, but you're not looking at the impact you can make on the people. Yes. So yes. I ended up doing the podcast, and that's how we connected as well. And when I say one thing I love about you is that you're so lit. I always say that my, you know, the mantra of the show. And so um, we just connected very, very strongly. And I told you right before we recorded, I said, you're going to be married within two years. And, and what'd I, you say? I just thought he was crazy. <laughs> uh, and you know what? Looking back now, what I realized is... Um, Marriage didn't define me as a pastor, but it was designed for me as a pastor. There it is. God never intended me to pastor as a single person. Yes. And so looking back at that, I can see, but I was not open at that point 
you know, to even figure, hey, you know, I'm going to get married again. So when you told me that, I was like, oh, I hear you, but I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the confirmations? Because there's some things that happened even from your mom and things that were preparing your heart, like uh, tilling the soil of your heart to prepare you to even look at a woman and desire her as a wife. What well, I'm going to start with my pastor because he made sure that I did not say publicly that I was not going to get married again. <laughs> Now, I tried to get as close to that as possible. Because <laughs> when I gave my letter out to our church, I pretty much said, hey, for right now, I'm just going to function as an African-American Charles Stanley. <laughs> and what, what I was saying is, look, I'm just going to be here. So he made me promise not to do that. And here's, here's a beautiful thing. Sometimes people can see something you can't see. Yeah. So the first thing that happened to me is Prophet Beaver, uh, shout out to you, Prophet, uh, he <laughs> came here, and he wasn't supposed to be here. He came with Apostle John Eckhart, and I had asked Apostle John Eckhart to uh, bring his most trusted prophet. And the guy that he was bringing ended up with COVID. So he asked Prophet Beaver, who was one of his personal prophets, to come. So Prophet Beaver comes, and, and uh, we, 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 he pulls up on the property. He sees some things that's prophetic. And, and then he asked Apostle, hey, can I connect with this pastor because I see God doing something super big in his life and I just want to pray him through some stuff. And so he came to me and he asked me for my number. I was like, okay, that's fine. And so I'll never forget the first conversation. He's like, uh, pastor, uh, I don't know you well, but uh, you're going to get married again. And I'm still 75, 25. <laughs> so he starts talking about this woman. He said, Pastor, I'm telling you, you're going to meet this lady, and it's going to be like a honeymoon forever. You're going to love her. You're going to be ready to leave church to go home and see your wife. And I'm thinking, this man is, I don't know what he's smoking. <laughs> and so every time he would call me, right? So I, was, I still wasn't ready for that. So anyway, uh, Dr. Nix, who's been a member for years, Pastor Lisa has a side hustle of doing event planning. I have no problems with side hustles. And so anyway, she was doing his book signing. He wrote a book last year. So he was doing a book signing. And so he had asked Pastor Lisa, hey, Pastor Lisa, do you think Pastor would mind if I use the foyer of the church to do my book signing? And so she says, well, why don't you ask Pastor? Well, she jumped ahead of him and called me because she already knew she was violating my preferences. Yeah. One of my preferences, and what you're going to learn through this process is, you cannot let your preferences override what God's principles are. Talk about Preferences it. are okay, but you can't let them override. So anyway, she came, she said, Pastor, uh, Dr. Nix, you know, I'm doing his book sign. I'm like, okay. She said, uh, he asked, could he maybe use the for you? And I just asked him to ask, ask you. I said, well, did you tell him no? She was like, no. I was like, why? You know the rules. We can't let, if we let one member use the church for something personal, we have to let everybody do it. So you already knew the rules. I know, Pastor. And then she asked me something. She says, will you pray about it? Well, I didn't want to pray about it. <laughs> why do I need to pray about my own rules? <laughs> but I didn't want to look unspiritual. <laughs> I mean, what does that sound like? A pastor saying, I don't want to pray about something. <laughs> So I was like, okay. So she said, would you pray about it? I said, okay. I went and prayed about it, and God told me to let him do it, which violated, again, my preferences. So I had to have a staff meeting. I had a staff meeting with all my staff. I said, hey, listen, Dr. Nix is going to be uh, using the foyer for his book signing, and, and uh, we don't you let people do that, but I prayed about it. God told me to let him do it. I say, so if any member, because I don't know if members are going to be at the book yeah. signing, if if any member asks you, why did Pastor Eben let Dr. Nix use the building and not let nobody else? I say, don't even try to respond to him. Send them to me. Because I was just telling him. God told me to do it. So anyway, so now this book signing is, is, is scheduled. I have never met this lady. Didn't know her. So uh, that night I was on the program to pray. And he had asked you at the last minute to, you know, be the orator or the moderator of the whole thing. So uh, there was a little stage that Pastor Lisa had set up. And so we were going to have to be up and down on the stage. So we were sitting next to each other. And uh, when I, we started talking, and I had a connection just like this. this has never happened to me. So I'm having a connection, but I'm 75, 25. 
<laughs> so I'm like, Lou, what's, what is this? <laughs> so we started talking, right? And so while we was talking, she started like fanning, like, it's hot in here. You need to, this your big church, you ain't got no air conditioning. I'm Y'all, like, I was throwing so much shade. I was hot. <laughs> yeah, she was hot. She was, and no, what? It was winter time. Yeah, Nobody it, it else was waiting. Hot in there. Yeah, she. Yeah. Nobody yeah, else had a, a Martin Luther King fan or nothing. <laughs> she fan. I'm thinking. I know why you getting hot. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we're just kind of bantering back and forth, and it, it, uh, it felt like I knew this lady for like 30 years. Yeah. So I was like, wow, that was different. So anyway, I'm going to try to fast forward what happened. So uh, Dr. Nix was passing out, uh, well, he had door prizes. Right. So one of the, the big door prizes was an iPad. So uh, he gave everybody tickets, and so this iPad uh, was the prize. So I'll never forget, her 10-year-old was there. She got a ticket, Maddie, and uh, I got my ticket. I, I was hoping I would win. <laughs> and so long story short, he pulls the, the winning ticket, and it happens to be his niece that wins the iPad. But Dr. Nix was like, oh, that's my niece. I'll get her one. Let's do another drawing. Yep. And I'm looking at the little girl, and she, she wanted fair and square. <laughs> so she's, like, upset. She's, like, not yep. happy that her uncle is giving away her iPad that she won. Yep. So I'm like, you know, Pastor Ed, we got a heart for the children. <laughs> so I was like, so I, I went to... Cherise and I told Dr. Nix, I'll buy her an iPad. And so that's what happened. I asked Pastor Lisa to buy it. She gave it to Dr. Nix. He gave it to her. She gave it to her daughter. And so the connections, what she did is she sent me an inbox on Instagram and asked me, uh, just told me thank you for <laughs> my generosity. Uh-huh. And so I was like, and I wanted to say something, but I was like, I'm still 75, 25. <laughs> So I just told her, hey, you're welcome, you know, anything, I'm glad, you know, your daughter enjoyed the iPad type of thing. So that's one thing. So here it is now, because I'm going to give you, as single people, right. the, the five eyes real quick, because I got to preach to you too, right? So, so here are the five eyes. You have uh, interested, then you move from that to investigate, then you move from there to inquire of God. Then number four, you get involved. And then number five, you get investment. That's called a ring. Yeah. Right? So anyway, so uh, after that, so a couple of months went by, but I was like, interested. So I just sort of like, you know, uh, went on social media, see what she investigate. did. Investigate. Now you investigate. I mean, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> I went on social media, see what she posted, see what she liked. I started following her because it was a private, you know, situation. So she had to know I was following her because I had to ask for permission. You know? <laughs> and so uh, <clears throat> when I realized, mm, I'm, I'm interested, you know, I, I had to find some things out. I had to find out uh, some things about her age, you know, because I knew I was older than her type of thing. And I'll come back to that in just a second. So before I did that, I was like, I need to, I need to talk to Dr. Nix. Yeah. <laughs> So I never forget Dr. Nix at the time was interviewing for a superintendent job, and so he came over to the house, and we talked about that. And then I said, uh, Dr. Nix, uh, I have something to ask you. I said, would it be okay if I became friends with your sister? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't want him to see me mack it up on his sister. <laughs> he'd be like, what pastor doing? <laughs> so I got permission from Dr. Nix, and this is what he said. He says, he says I don't have a problem with that. I said, well, what would you do if you was me? He says, well, I would get to know her and enjoy the process. And I said, well, Dr. Dix, I would treat her like I would want anybody to treat my sister. Facts. Had he told me no, I would have never reached out to her. So that was the first thing. That's good. No, I'm going to let you go. You're the pastor. You're going to take over anyway, so do what you do. All right. All right. Yes, I'm taking over the show. (laughs) This is Pastor Evan with Dear Future Wifey Podcast. (laughs) (laughs) So then... I started investigating. Yes. Because I got interested, say, but I needed to investigate. So one of the things I did is I asked her for permission to ask her best friend out to dinner so I could talk about her. Yeah. Tina's here. Where's Tina? Tina hey, over Tina. there. The way, What's Tina. up, Tina? So that's her best friend. So I said, hey, I mean, who all knows a person they best friend know them? Yeah. So I said, uh, can I... 
have dinner with your best friend. She didn't have a problem with that. So I asked her best friend to ask her husband, Anthony, could I go out with his wife? <laughs> Not like that. So Tini and I scheduled dinner. So I had some interview questions for <laughs> Tina about Sharice. Come on, I want to hear give you some I, I, of the I wanna questions. Hear, I want to hear them. Here's some of the questions. The first question was, what would you consider her weaknesses in a relationship? Her best friend's going to tell me that. Even if she don't want to tell me the truth, I can read through it. Well, it's called me, discernment. So going into this relationship, I didn't say that during my process of non-prayer, my last about year of my marriage, I realized that that I can't continue mm -hmm. this way. And right. I just had a calling back to Christ. Yes. And so I had spent that the last year really just back in the Bible, back in prayer, getting my life and getting my heart and my head right with Christ. Yeah. So I was already on the path before he even came along. And yep. so I was in a journey of working on Sharice, making sure that I was healed, making sure that I was whole, making sure that I was what God needed me to be. And so whenever he was in his investigation situation <laughs> and he wanted to meet with Tina, I told her, I said, Tina, I've got a lot of baggage. I have gone through, I have two divorces, I have two children. And I said, he asked me, he said, do you want me to tell you the questions? And I said, no. And I said, Tina, be as authentic as possible. Don't try to sugarcoat me to be some kind of person. Don't try to make it glorify me, give him the raw, I said, and however you feel about me, if you feel like these are areas that I need to improve, or you feel like these are That's areas good. of weakness, I said, do not put, do, I said, because I don't want it if it's not of God. Talk about I don't it. even want it. And I, I knew, I knew who he was and his position, but I even told him, I said, I don't care. I don't, you know, I mean, I do care that, you know, he's a great man, but and I, <laughs> I wouldn't let him know, but I didn't care. I was right. that committed. I had made so many mistakes in the past that I was like, I refuse to go through another bad situation. Yes. If, I am, if it is not from God, yeah. I don't even want it. That was good. Wow, that's so good. So I did ask that question. My second question was, um, what was her biggest personal weakness as a person? My third question was, um, what makes Sharice a good friend to you? The fourth one was, what would, what would make Sharice a good wife? Because at this point, I, I'm not looking for a ministry wife. I'm looking for a wife. There it is. Hold Amen. on, hold on, hold on. I want, you, I want you to unpack that. Tell me the difference between that which you had and that which you desire. Well, I'm not going to talk about what I had. We well, ain't talking about what you had. And that's but what that. I will say is this. A help me is designed to help you. Right. Which means that whatever I need help with, she's going to help me do that. That's what I'm talking about. So whether it's personal or whether it's professional, if she's a help me, she's going to help me. Right. So I know she's committed to that. So anyway, uh, you know, so my fourth, my fifth question was, what is the difference about me? What is the difference between me compared to who she previously was with? And I will disclose that answer. She says, you have Christ. So... Uh, this is where now it's going to get real interesting with signs and confirmations. There it is. Okay, because I believe the average Christian have signs and confirmations mixed up. So this is in Mark chapter 16, verse 20. It talks about Jesus confirming the word with signs following. So listen, God confirms his word, not necessarily our feelings. So as I started walking through this process, I knew that... Um, I needed to get God involved, which is the third step. I needed to inquire of God. And so what happened is the scripture says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be what? Established. So somebody else needs to know what was going on that I believe God was now doing because now I'm aware that, okay, this is more so of God because I started praying, okay, Lord, uh, what do you want me to do? I want to stay single. What do you want me to do? Now, what helped me make that decision? Uh, all the inboxes, and personal dinners, and all that, you know, because women are aggressive these days. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I started, I mean, I got some stalking and some other stuff. Yep. And so I think God used that because it made me uncomfortable. Yep. I was like, oh, I can't, if I got to deal with this, I, I don't know, Lord. So he kind of used that, right? So I prayed two prayers after I realized 
I think this, this young lady is the person I'm supposed to marry. I prayed two prayers. The first one was, God, I need you to talk to Pastor Lisa about this lady. Right. Now you say, well, why Pastor Lisa? I've been knowing Pastor Lisa for over 25 years. She knows me, and I know her. She knows me in the good. She knows me in the bad. And she's a woman of God. So I asked the Lord to talk to Pastor Lisa about that. I didn't tell nobody my prayers, not even my best friend, James MacGyver. My second prayer was, Lord, I need you to talk to somebody that I don't even know, that she don't even know about this situation. So the first prayer, uh, you know, you got to get time to, for God to do what he does. And so I'll never forget, we finished the staff meeting, and Pastor Lisa comes to me, and you have to understand, Pastor Lisa did not meet uh, Cherise until the day of the book signing. So she didn't know her either. Pastor Lisa calls me in her office. She runs the money, so I'm thinking she's going to ask me a money question. And she says, uh, Pastor, can you, can you have a seat for a second? I was like, okay. She says, you know, Pastor, I ain't trying to get in your personal business. I ain't trying to fix you up or nothing like that. She says, but I believe I met the person that you're supposed to marry. I was like, who? Now, I done prayed and asked the Lord to talk to her. So I'm trying to keep a straight face. <laughs> who? And she said, Dr. Nix's sister. And inside I'm going, yes! <laughs> but I got to stay calm. So I just sit there and say, why? <laughs> so she goes down all these reasons that I saw from just being poised, just, you know, just different stuff. And so then I told her, I said, Pastor Lisa, do you know that I asked God to talk to you about her? And Pastor Lisa was like shocked about it. So that's confirmation of prayer number one. Number two, I get an inbox, and they're going to put the, the inbox, they're going to put what was said in the inbox from this person. So let me say this. This person inboxes me on Facebook. They don't even know me. So I'm going to read to you what they inbox me. This is right after Lisa, uh, Pastor Lisa. Hi, Pastor Connor, which, by the way, shout out to Nikita Coleman. I appreciate you. At the time, she didn't know God was using her. It says, hi, Pastor Connor, this is not a scam. I didn't know how else to reach you but through social media. I don't really know you, only visited your church once. But I love the Lord, and I've been a Christian for a long time. I'm reaching out because on this morning I had a dream about you that I believe had meaning. Without going into every detail, the point of the dream was that you were choosing to remarry. Now, this is when I'm in the process of now rethinking this thing. She says, you introduced her to your congregation, y'all, <laughs> most, look at your neighbor say most, no. <laughs> most were happy for you. Some puzzled and concerned because she was younger than you. Remember I told you last week to remember the word puzzled? Yeah, yeah. well, some of y'all was puzzled because, the, so I'm just going to tell you, there is a gap between us, you know, but it's a good gap. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you the exact number, but it's over 10, 12, keep <laughs> We're just going to keep it right there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God sees some youthfulness in me. <laughs> so she goes up. She didn't say all that. I just said that. <laughs> so then she said, uh, some were puzzled because, uh, concerned because she was much younger than you, but she was genuinely sent to help you, a help suitable for you. Then the dream switch scenes, and you were in your church office with your head down, discouraged because you had lashed out at someone. I didn't see the lashing out. I knew it happened. That's Elder Evan. I chewed somebody out. I know. That's just me. You know. I, and so she, she had a glimpse of Elder Evan and didn't know it. <laughs> so anyway, she says, I didn't see it. She says, so you didn't want to go out and preach because the lashing was pretty intense. But this woman, the one you chosen, came in your office, put her hand on your back, and began to pray for you. You were encouraged and ready to preach. I don't know if this means or will mean anything to you, but I wanted to tell you, I've been a dreamer and a seer most of my life, but I don't always share. Most of the times I just pray for the people that I see, and other times I do both pray and share. I felt to share this with you. I hope that it's not offensive. I respect your office, and in no way do I have any other intentions but to share the dream in hopes that it encourages you. People are definitely praying for you that you know not of. May God continue to bless you, your ministry, and your family. If this dream means absolutely nothing to you, I apologize in advance and never want to offend anyone. Can we give Nikita a big hand clap? So that was the confirmation number two 
But then, you know, I, I realized something that I didn't know. Here it is, 57. I've been knowing my mama for 57 years. When I was going through my divorce, my mom was having prophetic dreams. Right. But I didn't know that my mom prophetically dreamed. So here's what would happen. Something would be going on. My mama would have a dream. When I would go see her, she would say, Evan, I had this dream two weeks ago. And so she will start telling me. Well, by the time she told me the dream, it had already happened in my life. The first time it happened, I was like, what is that? Then the second time it happened, I was like, what is that? <laughs> then the third time it happened, it was so specific, only one other person outside of me knew about it, and I was like, I wonder are they talking about talking to my mama. So I went to this person, I said, hey, listen, have you been talking to my mama? <laughs> He's like, no, Pastor, I'm here talking about your mama. And then I realized my mama prophetically dreams, right? So my mom has this dream like a year and some change ago. She has this dream. This is when I was 75, 25. I'm sitting down with her. She says, Evan, I had this dream. She was so excited about the dream. I had this dream that you had this little girl. And she describes this little girl, light-skinned little girl. She was so pretty. Evan, you love this little girl. And I'm getting mad the whole time my mama's talking. Because first of all, I have a vasectomy. I don't want no more kids. <laughs> I can't even have no more kids. And you talking about you, I had, you had a dream about me having kids? So I'm not happy. So while my mama is being all excited about this dream, I'm steaming like broccoli. I'm not happy at all. So finally, when my mama gets done with the dream, I literally just sliced my mama. I was like, mama, I don't know what that means. You need to keep that to yourself. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Well, when I finally shared Cherise to my mother, this is now, some year, a year and some change later, I shared my mama, I met her and everything, told her who she was, Dr. Dixon's sister, and so she says, does she have any children? And I said, yes. He says, do you have any pictures of them? And I showed her the pictures, and her youngest one, London, was the little girl in my mother's dream. Yeah, yeah. How will I know that? Yeah. So these are things that I want to just encourage you. You cannot have a secret relationship and God bless it. Teach. Teach. Because it's out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Teach. It's when you're in your feelings and in your flesh that you don't want nobody to know. Well, God can't too much do nothing with that. Now, now can God just, I believe God blesses marriage. I believe that. But I also believe that God will design someone just for you. Right. Amen. And there's not just one person that's just made for you. Because what if that person die? Or what if that person get in the flesh and marry somebody different? Now the whole world is off. So it's just not just one person. Now stay married if you're married. Stay married. <laughs> so, uh, so let's talk about being involved real quick. Because... I he think finally, Pastor Evan is about to interview me now. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so I meet Lateris. Yeah. Uh, get on his podcast. And we talk. And he says to me, you're going to get married in a couple of years. What made you say that? Because I saw it. I, I said that there's no, I just don't believe it's in God's will for a pastor to be left uncovered. And I know the, the gravity of marriage. I knew I talked to you, and one of the things that I admire most about you is that I asked you about why did you get a divorce, and you never, ever assassinated your, your ex-wife. You know, you never said, what, tell, tell the people what you said. Well, at the end of the day, first of all, she's always going to be my children's mother. Right. Okay? That's number one. Right. And most people are ill will towards their ex because... It's all to do with them on the inside. The pain is what people are speaking from. Right. And this is why if you're going through difficulty, get some help. Yeah. Get some counseling. Get in the, in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. And, and I'm not talking about counseling with your friends. Because they're going to tell you what you want to hear. Yes. I'm talking about getting some professional help. And that's the problem, I think, with a lot of believers and Christians right. in the church. Uh, we need some therapy and Jesus. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I choose to not do that, even to today. Now, whether your ex is returning that shouldn't even matter. Right. Because at the end of the day, again, 
Just because someone else's will changes doesn't mean that God's will changes for your life. And when you know from the gut that whatever you have gone through in your life, he's going to work that thing together for you. If you know that, yeah. not in your head, because if you know it in your head, you still going to act up. Right. But if you know it in your heart, then you don't worry about what someone says or what someone does or what someone, you don't worry about that. Why? Because God's going to work it out. So that was the reason. The reason was I watched how you still covered your ex-wife. I watched how you were a little adverse about coming on the platform because you didn't want all the attention from all these women. And, and you were 75, 25 percent in not ever remarrying or whatnot. And so in that space, I knew that if God had 25 percent and you weren't... <sighs> The opportunity to have all these women at your beck and call wasn't something you desire. That means that you're the type of man that only wants one woman. And so it's just a process before the promise that God had to take you through. And then I saw how you looked at Cherise from that day. And so I started, so then you started inquiring, with, uh, you know, with me about her. Right. And then I began to tell you about her. And then I called her and I was like, girl, listen. I, I, felt like, I felt like I was one of them little He was double dipping. Yeah, yeah. I was like, girl, let me tell you something. And so, uh, so I called up and I started talking. I said, so what you think about him? She said, he said, what? And then I, said, <laughs> and I began to tell her, I said, would you be a first lady? She said, you know, I never want to be that, but the, the space that I'm in, I'm open to allowing whatever God wants to do in my life. I said, ooh, we got it now. And so, and so, so here it is. I have two people right here on both sides of me that I saw belonged with each other. I knew it. I knew that what she lacked and what she desired was you. What, I didn't know you that well at that time, but just hearing and connecting with you in the spirit, I knew that my friend would be a suitable helpmate, as you just said, a suitable helpmate for you. It was undeniable. Well, and this is when I became intentionally involved, meaning that I made sure that she knew that I was interested beyond just a friend. Right. But then now I started including people that are in my main small circle for them to know and start vetting the process. Yes. So my best friend, Pastor James, I had him to come and preach here, and I had him to meet her. And you have to understand, we're just talking over the phone. and we're, Look, there's no dating because I don't want to give somebody the wrong impression. And, so, and then on top of that, see, it's hard to do a show like this if people in the audience have your draws. Oh, oh yeah. Woo! I'm not going to say nothing else. All I'm going to say is, my name ain't Joseph. Hallelujah. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> so I, I started being intentionally involved. And uh, part of that is me having close friends meet her. Uh, me meeting her family. I had dinner with her, her, her mom and her dad. And, that, and let me just say this, when I asked her parents, uh, I asked both of them, uh, would they l let me marry her? They both said yes. Yeah. Uh, and they both approved. And that was important to me too, because if that not, had not happened, I believe that there is a blessing that parents can give you. Yes. I believe that. Yes. So anyway, we started doing that process and, and throughout the process, I'm watching guys. So I'll just, I'm going to go fast forward and I'm going to come back again. So about three weeks ago, I am sitting in my bed on Saturday. Typically Saturdays, I don't leave the house. I consecrate that kind of thing. And I'm sitting there and I'm studying. And a friend of mine who I hadn't spoken to in probably two years or so, he's a pastor, but he used to be in the NFL. Uh, shout out to Aeneas Williams. He's a Hall of Famer out of uh, St. Louis. I think he played for the Cardinals and some other teams. So anyway... I know him. I preached at his church before. He calls me that morning. I see his name. I'm like, wow, Aeneas is coming. Why is he calling? So I pick up the phone, and uh, you got to know how he talks. He talks a little slow. But Pastor Evan, this is Pastor Aeneas. I'm like, hey, Pastor. So he started asking me how things were going. He does, I don't know how much he knows about what's going on in my world. So he says, Pastor Evan, I'm here in McDonald's. I don't eat their food, but... Uh, I do do my devotions and drink their coffee. And he says, uh, I was sitting here and I was reading 1 Samuel chapter 7. And it's a story about Samuel. They were in between two cities and he took this rock 
And the rock, he, when he set it down, it says it, it means Ebenezer, the stone of help. And the next part of that verse says, because the Lord had, past tense, helped them. He says, God told me to call you this morning to tell you he's already sent you a help me. Now, I'm dating her by this time now. And I'm like, so now I'm wondering who told him. <laughs> so I said, because we have one mutual friend. I said, uh, who told you? Uh, I said, do you know I'm dating? He says, no. He says, I don't know anything about that. And so he began to just share that how God had put it on his heart that morning to the point that he had to stop what he was doing and pick up his phone and call me. Now, by that time, I already knew what God wanted me to do. But I want you to see that God loves you too much for you to make a mistake. Right. Right. But most of the time, we're not submitted to what God wants to do. There so when he's sending signs and yes. confirmations, because here's the difference. A confirmation is what God wants you to know. A sign is what you want to know. Mm. Lord, let it rain, and I believe. Let it <laughs> rain today, and I believe Tyrone is for me. <laughs> okay. So here's the interesting thing. So my best friend met her. Some of my past friends met her. I met her people. I met her family. She comes from an amazing family, yeah. a spiritual family. So that's a plus right there. Her mom's been a first lady for almost her whole life. So, you know, at least she's had an example to see and that type of thing. But I never forget, it was time for me to talk to my pastors about this. I done prayed. I done did everything I'm supposed to do. So I'll never forget, I set up a, a, a date to fly to Houston to mm -hmm. meet with my pastor and his wife. And... Uh, uh, on the way, they picked me up from the airport, and uh, on the way to the restaurant, I began to share with them what it was. And what's interesting is my pastor says to me, we already know why you were coming to talk to us. Mm. And so as I began to share with them about Sharice and that type of thing, and my pastor's wife says, son, you need to do what's in your heart to do. We believe that this is God for you, and we'll support you in what you're doing. And so I then asked my pastor for a plan on how to do this. Right. And he gave me a plan. This is yeah. part of the plan. Y'all yeah. may not have known it, but this is part of the plan. He had me to work it out. One of the reasons I came and said I was dating is to, is to shrink some of the inboxes and some of the personal <laughs> stuff that I was getting. My line out there got real short. Y'all may not have paid attention, okay? It's all good, it's all good though. I got love for everybody. Had to, had to cut it down, had to cut it down. <laughs> Let me just say this too. Some of y'all have come from churches with oh, pastors who have kids from the members. Yeah. You know, here it is. He married and then he got a kid by Sister Jones' yeah. daughter. Yeah. So that ain't this, see. So anyway, you know, uh, I'll never forget. So they tell me what to do. I started working on some things. I mean, my pastor has incredible wisdom. So now it's time for them to meet Sharice. This is so funny. This is the first time, and baby, you can jump in here anytime you want to. This is the first time we are actually going somewhere together, right? <laughs> right. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. So uh, <laughs> we're at the airport, and uh, I should read it. I I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. Let me find uh, uh, Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl in California. Cheryl just texted me, too. I love Cheryl. Uh, I'm going I'm to let y'all, this is real live right here. I didn't plan to tell y'all, read, no, read what she though. said. All right, so let me find it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cheryl's, her maiden name is Howard. Uh, uh, what's Cheryl's new? Brooks, that's, a, that's who she is now. So anyway, I get this text message, let me find it, from Cheryl. Why are we at the airport? Okay. Here we go. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> hey, I'm going to read it just like she wrote it. Hey, Pastor Evan. One of my friends spotted you in the airport today. <laughs> All I'm going to say is go, Pastor Evan. <laughs> she said, if it's what it looks like, I couldn't be happier for you. <laughs> So here's my text back. Wait a minute. My this is what she said. My friend thought you were a reality star and sent me a picture. 
And I was like, that's my pastor. Go say hello. She was scared to say anything. So somebody's watching us on our first time out. Listen, Cheryl is a member of the church. She lives in California. And her friend in Texas, which, by the way, uh, something with her plane and got this and this and this. So for her to be in the terminal she was in, she wasn't supposed to be there. So anyway, and then Cheryl sends me pictures that her friend sent me, (laughs) sent her of us. I'm like, I got paparazzi and don't even know it. Boy, Pastor Edmund was so, it was funny because you were so nervous. She was like, uh-oh, I think the cat's out the bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, like, right, right, right. So this yeah, is what I said. So this is what I said to Cheryl. Okay, Cheryl. <laughs> Keep it a secret. <laughs> We're on our way to have dinner with my pastor and his wife. Can you show me the pictures you got? <laughs> <laughs> so then, anyway, uh, after we had dinner, because I'm thinking, wow, what are the chances of one of my members in California having a friend thinking I'm a reality star, take a picture, right. send it to her, and she say, that's my pastor. But anyway, we just thought it was funny. And, and then we, of course, had dinner uh, with Apostle Hilliard. And so as we uh, fast forward this thing, um, you proposed to her when? And why in the way that you proposed? Actually, I was going to do it on today. Exactly. I was going to do it. I thought, man, this will be a great day. This will be a little, it'll be, the the Dear Future Wife podcast will go viral. (laughs) And uh, we've been going through premarital. And I woke up that morning and uh, we were having a premarital meeting. And the Lord spoke to me and says, I want you to propose to her while you're in counseling. I was like, wow, that's different. And so I didn't know that morning. She didn't know. The counselors didn't know. And so we're doing counseling. And one, some of the things that they pointed out as far as our compatibility yeah. and that whole thing was so – because I was thinking, Lord, what if it's a bad meeting? <laughs> <laughs> what if we walk out of there fighting or something? <laughs> so anyway, we got to uh, – it was one point in the session that – because earlier in the session is when the counselor cried. She was so happy for what she saw God doing and so what I did at one point, I got on my knees, and uh, I had already written out that morning what I wanted to say, and the counselors pulled out their phone because they figured out what was going on, and then, of course, that's when I did it. How did you feel in that moment, Sharice? I was just shocked because I thought he was going to do it this Sunday, too. So when he got on his knees and started pulling out his phone, I was like, is he reading a poem? Like, what is he, what, what is he doing? I, 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 I was just so shocked. Um, and then in that moment, I just, I, I just was so grateful um, because here is a God who didn't forget me. That's what I want to get you know, to. Um, That's what I want you to say right there. He, you know, because who am I? Who am I? You know, I'm no different from any other lady that sits in the audience. I've, I've gone through trials. I've gone through tribulations. I've gone through heartaches. I've gone through bad situations. And when you feel like God has forgotten you, he has not forgotten you. And I'm here to be a testimony to encourage you. When you fix your heart and you fix your mind and you center it on Christ, he will remember you. God is a faithful God. He's just, and if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. To sum up, and I want you to say this really quickly, Pastor Eben, and I'm going to pass it to Sharice. When you say what God did for you, sum it up. Pastor Evan, what did God do for you in giving you this woman? Let me say this. He did what I needed, and he did what I wanted. Praise God. (laughs) That's it. He did exceeding and abundantly above all that I could ask or think. That's for all the people that needed a a scripture. That's for all y'all. Sharice, when you say God hadn't forgotten you, and, and he did it for you. What did he do for you when he gave you my buddy, Evan? He just restored. Um, he just restored me. He restored my faith in him. Um, of course, God has never left or forsaken me. He's never done that. Even when I turned away, he still was faithful. He still blessed me. But what God did is he's just blessed me with a man of God who loves me unconditionally. Y'all, this man is so amazing. He is so good to me. I just sometimes sit and I just cry and I just sometimes wonder like, 
God, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful um, because he really, what you see on the stage every yep. Sunday is what you what I get um, every day at home. He's consistent. He's kind. He's loving. He's sweet. He's generous. Come um, on, girl. <laughs> you better get some points. So I... <laughs> I just, I thank God for, um, and, and, and that year where I was focused on getting my relationship back with Christ, and I remember my friend Tina and I, we were reading the Bible, um, we were reading, doing a year reading the Bible, and um, I remember reading about Sarah, and I remember reading about Rebecca, and I remember reading about Leah, and I remember reading about these women, and when God specifically said, and he remembered her. And, and it, sh it spoke mm -hmm. to me. And I remember calling my friend and I said, friend, I said, God is not going to forget. He hasn't forgotten about me. I even told my mom, I went to their house like the summer and I, I said, I just feel like something is coming. I just feel like God is preparing me. I just feel like God is doing something in my life. I hadn't even met him yet, but I knew that God was preparing me. I knew that God was positioning me. I knew that God needed Sharice to get right before I could be um, in his life. And so it is important, ladies or gentlemen, anyone, if you've got to get your life right with Christ. You've got to be whole. I couldn't come to him broken. I couldn't come to him if I wasn't healed. I wouldn't be any good to him. So spend the time to get back um, focused on Christ. Man, that was beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful. Well, listen, our time has come to an end. Uh, this is an episode affectionately titled Unorthodox Love. Y'all give it up for Pastor Evan and Sharice Nick, y'all. Hey, before we start, is there a date? Is there a date to, to get married? When y'all plan on getting married? Sooner than later. Sooner than later. That's the date. <laughs> Sooner than later. Y'all give it up for my boy, y'all. <laughs> Thank you. So... I want to do an altar call. If you would, be seated. Uh, this is where the Dear Future Wipey podcast will be edited, I'm, I'm pretty sure. But pretty a nice. lot of times, uh, what I appreciate about Sharice is that she said she was not going to let anything or anybody keep her from having her relationship with God in Christ and to maintain her peace at all costs. And sometimes when we compromise, our peace is what we lose. And so with every head bowed, every eye closed, because even if you're here and you're married, if you don't have peace within yourself, you can't have peace within your marriage. Maybe you're single and, man, it's rough out there in those single streets. I want to encourage you to just let your focus be Christ, because when... That thing, when I said, okay, it's all about Jesus for me, when I wasn't looking, God brought the right person. Yeah. So here's the question. If you died today and you're not sure you'd go to heaven, I want to pray for you. If you're here today and you need to read, just commit your life to him. Recommit your heart to him. I want to pray for you. If you're here and you need a church home, I believe this is the foundation and the springboard of what God is about to do big at Board of Truth Family Church. Or maybe you need to get baptized. One of those four things. So here's what I want us all to do. I want us to all to just pray this prayer of salvation together. And then I'm going to pray for those who may make a, be, be, make, make a decision to do something different. Let's pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. I believe God raised you from the dead. And today, I make you my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, come on the inside. Change me on the outside. Take me out of darkness. Put me in the light. Today, I surrender my heart and my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Father, thank you for those who may be recommitting their hearts to you. There are some people listening and watching whose hearts have been shattered in pieces. And you're not trying to put the pieces back together again. You're just trying to give them a whole nother heart. And I pray today, Father, that whatever decision they're making, whether it's to recommit their life, join Word of Truth Family Church, or get baptized, I pray today that spiritual momentum will take place as a result of the decision that they're making. I thank you for the today. 
And I pray, Father, that you will continue to open doors and use him in ways he could not have ever thought, uh, ever thought about. And I thank you and I praise you for Word of Truth Family Church and for a revival of relationships to take place in this church. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Good morning to you. God bless you. Come on, y'all give it up for the word. Hey, thank you so much for what joining us today. Sunday. Hey, if you liked our service, please give us a like, give us a share, give us a comment. Let us know where you, where you tuned in from, where you're from, and join us again here next Sunday. Thank you again so much for being a part of our service. Cannot wait to see you again.